Nancy Pelosi is now at war with her own base. Now, this has been a long time in coming, Nancy Pelosi being at war with her base. You knew this was coming because ever since the election of 2018, there have been some fresh faces, very fresh as well as incredibly faced. And those fresh faces have made clear that they see themselves as in control of the direction of the future Congress. And Nancy Pelosi has been playing the appeasement game. She's basically been feeding pieces of the party to these people in the hopes that they will eat her last. But they're not interested in eating her last. They're interested in using her as their meat puppet. They would prefer to use her as sort of the puppet. They put their hand behind her head and they make her voice, her voice come out, but they are saying AOC words, which means a lot of likes and ums. Well, now Speaker Pelosi has run afoul of this group of people. But listen, she was willing to go so far as to let them off the hook for blatant anti-Semitism. She was willing to water down a resolution to not include the name Ilhan Omar. She was willing to water down the resolution to not only deal with anti-Semitism. She was willing to go out of her way not to tap, even love tap, these, these young, fresh faces so as to prove to them that she was actually in control. And now they are coming for her. They are coming for her because she has said the unsayable. They're not going to impeach President Trump. <gasps> I know, I know. So according to the New York Post, House Speaker Nancy Pelosi announced on Monday that she is against impeaching President Trump unless there's something so compelling and overwhelming and bipartisan. Okay, well, it's that last, it's that last statement, bipartisan, that got her in trouble because everybody knows the Republicans are not going to sign on to an attempt to impeach President Trump. It's not going to happen. There weren't any Democratic votes to impeach Bill Clinton back in the day. The speaker is surely up to speed on what evidence Democrats actually have against Trump and has a fair sense of what special counsel Bob Mueller's report will say, according to the Post editorial board. She recognizes it's nothing that will persuade anyone who hasn't wanted Trump ousted since Election Day 2016. So this is Nancy Pelosi being smart because Nancy Pelosi recognizes that if, in fact, it looks like a witch hunt, if, in fact, it looks like she's trying to impeach Trump for non-crimes, that's going to tick off an awful lot of people. A lot of people are going to say, well, this seems unfair. Trump is going to loudly proclaim that he's being targeted for unfair reasons. Moderates who are not interested in a prolonged impeachment spiel are going to get uptight with Nancy Pelosi and the Democrats. She knows that because she is not a dumb dumb. Unfortunately, there are members of her base who, in fact, are dumb dumbs, and they're very angry at her. Very angry at her. So that means that they are going to be attacking her. Now, what's funny is that, again, the most militant people when it comes to the Mueller report, even they are looking forward to the Mueller report and saying, I don't think that what we've been saying is there is actually going to be there. One of those people is Adam Schiff, the representative from my district in California. Adam Schiff, Adam Schiff, who literally has a pup tent set up outside the green room at CNN so he can talk about Russia just any time of the day and call him at like one o'clock in the morning and boom, he's on a rerun of, of exploring the world with, with W. Kamel Bell. And he just sort of pops in to talk about Russia for no reason at any time of the morning. It's like, oh, brief update on Russia. Call Adam Schiff. He's right outside. Uh, even Adam Schiff is, is saying, well, yeah, I'm, I'm not sure that we're going to be able to do this impeachment thing. We don't have Senate support. In the absence of very graphic evidence, uh, it would be difficult to get the support in the Senate uh, needed to make an impeachment successful. Uh, so, again, you know, my feeling is let's see what Bob Mueller produces. Um, but uh, the evidence will have to be uh, pretty overwhelming. OK, so that is not actually going to happen. But this has ticked off the Democratic base. The Democratic base is very angry at Nancy Pelosi. The fresh faces of the Democratic base have come out and said that this is very bad. We have to impeach Trump. Don't you understand? He's the most dangerous man alive. So they're not wrong. Here's the thing. They're not wrong, given the rhetoric of people like Nancy Pelosi. If, in fact, Donald Trump is the most dangerous man alive, if, in fact, he is an incipient Hitler, then you have to get him out of office by any means necessary. No matter what, you must get rid of him. That's the, that's the idea from the fresh faces. And the fresh faces, again, are not incorrect in their assessment of the situation. And as we'll see, they are not shy about suggesting such. They're not shy about saying that sort of thing. All righty, so the Democrats are upset, rightly so, with Nancy Pelosi. It turns out that when you pitch your base on we have to get rid of Hitler, they sort of want you to get rid of Hitler. And this is why so many folks in the radical base are resonating to people like Ilhan Omar. So Ilhan Omar yesterday was asked about the fact that she'd said some pretty nasty things about Barack Obama. She made a boo-boo. She talked to Politico, and in her interview with Politico, she said that Barack Obama was, I kid you not, a murderer with a pretty face. She said that in her interview with Politico. Then she tried to back off from that and say, no, 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 I didn't mean that at all. She said, I even have a recording to prove that I was misquoted. Then she released the recording, and it showed that she said exactly what she was quoted as saying. So she doesn't understand how recordings work. Also, 
The Jews must have gotten to that recording, obviously. I mean, there's only one answer there. So now she says, listen, when I said that Obama isn't human or that he's a murderer, that's not right. He, he's, he's not a murderer. I'll tell you who's the real murderer. I'll tell you who's the real inhuman person. That, of course, is President Trump. I just want to get to your side of the story. Do you believe really that Trump and Obama are the same, just different when it comes to their policies? We understand that you refute this political story. Could you just set the record straight so we get your side of it? Do you think that President Obama is the same as President Absolutely Trump? Absolutely not. That is silly to even think and equate the two. One is human, the other is... Is it true that you just think that he's more polished than Trump? That she's, she, she is such an angry person. I mean, just for, forget about, you know, the, the suggestion is that if you say that, that Ilhan Omar is angry, that this is some sort of racial slur. No, she's just an angry person. There are lots of black folks who are not angry. She is a Somali woman who happens to be a very angry person. Every time you see her on tape, she's being an angry person. Every single time. There's a member of the media asking her a perfectly normal question about something that she says, and she starts sneering at them, and then she spits the answer at them as though she's angry at them. There's nothing abnormal about asking her about something she said to Politico to a reporter. But here's the real key. She says Trump isn't even a human being. So she compared Obama to Trump. She said basically they're the same, except Obama was prettier. And now she's backtracking by saying Trump isn't even human. Well, if you believe Trump isn't human, then why wouldn't you want to impeach him? If you believe that he's a space alien sent to destroy the earth, presumably you'd be in favor of impeachment. So Nancy Pelosi has now run afoul of her own base. She's run a fa and you're seeing it on Twitter. You're seeing people on the left saying Nancy Pelosi has been bought and paid for. Something's happened to Nancy. What happened to woke Nancy? Here's the deal, Nancy Pelosi. When you flirt with the radicals in your party, eventually they behead you. That's what happens with every revolution. Robespierre went to the guillotine. You lead the revolution. You may not end up with your head outside the bucket. That's the way this works. Now, the Democrats are, in fact, struggling against this. In a second, we'll get to that. The Democrats are struggling against this. So for example, you got Steiny Hoyer. Steiny Hoyer is the House minority, majority whip. And he was specifically asked about the new faces, the Ilhan Omars and the Rashida Talibs and the Ocasio-Cortezes. And he says, listen, I got plenty of other people here who are represented by this party. Why are we being dictated to by these particular ones? He says, quote, we've got 62 new Democratic members, not three. So he and, and Pelosi are trying to dismiss the power of these new members. But the problem is those three new members are getting all the media. And the reason they're getting all the media is because the media actually agree with these three new members. The media would like to see President Trump impeached. This is the problem. If you live inside the Washington, D.C., New York beltway bubble, and I'm not just talking about people who are members of government. I'm talking about members of the media. If you live inside that bubble, then you and everyone you know believe that President Trump is an evil man and you believe that the Russians stole the election. And this is why the coverage on CNN doesn't seem to reflect what the American people want to hear about very much. It's why the ratings aren't very good. Instead, it seems to reflect the sensibilities of people who spend all day ensconced in this stuff and deeply worried about the evils of President Trump. Well, who mirrors those worries more than Ilhan Omar and Rashida Tlaib and AOC? The answer is none of them. Right? None of these other 62 members mirror those worries better. And so Nancy Pelosi has a problem. Nancy Pelosi, believe it or not, understands the voter in Ohio better than the reporters on CNN. Nancy Pelosi understands the voters in Ohio better than Rashida Tlaib, who is from Michigan, or Ilhan Omar, who is from Minnesota, or AOC. These are all from extraordinarily blue districts in which all their supporters pat them on the back for saying incredibly radical things. They are in bubbles. Nancy Pelosi is in a bubble of her own in San Francisco, but Nancy Pelosi hasn't actually been the representative from San Francisco for a long time. She's been at the head of the Democratic Party establishment in the House of, in the House of Representatives. She's been the head of it since 2006. She's been in that position of power for 12 years. That's a long time to hear from various Congress people all over America and what their constituents are looking for. But what those people are looking for may in fact be at war with the radicals. And this is a problem not only for Democrats in Congress, it's a problem for Democrats across the board, for example, in the 2020 election. It means that anybody who is perceived as even remotely moderate is immediately going to be cast out. That's why I think that right now Bernie Sanders is the leader coming around the turn in the Democratic primaries. Now, it's still very early. Obviously, a lot can happen. But there are a lot of folks who are trying to say that Joe Biden is the guy who's going to take the nomination. I don't see that. I don't see Joe Biden taking the nomination. I think he'd be the one who, I think they'd be smart to nominate Joe Biden. I think if you're talking about somebody who is most likely to win Pennsylvania, Michigan, and Wisconsin, all three states Democrats need to win. If, if I think that 
that Biden is the guy who is most likely to win those states. But the problem is Biden is not the guy who is most likely to win these primaries. His best day will be the first day he declares. The day that Joe Biden declares, there'll be all sorts of media. He'll see a little bump in the polls. He'll go up from whatever it is, 28 percent to 33 percent. And then he'll start coming down again. Why? Because he's apt to be torn apart by both the progressive wing and the intersectional wing of the Democratic Party. Leading the the battle on the intersectional side is Jamel Bowie. Jamel Bowie is a columnist formerly for Slate, now for The New York Times. He has a column today called The Trouble with Biden. And it is a good reminder of why it is that the Democrats are unlikely to nominate somebody like Joe Biden, who is in any way moderate. Here's what Jamel Bowie writes. He says, as they begin their search for a nominee, most Democrats prize electability above all else. They want a sure thing, someone who will beat President Trump. But beating Trump isn't the same as beating Trumpism. Unseating the president won't automatically undermine the white resentment and racial chauvinism that drive his movement. That will depend on the nature of the campaign against him and whether it challenges the assumptions of his ideology or affirms them in the name of electoral pragmatism. So this is Jamel Bowie making the case against Joe Biden by basically saying that Biden is another Trump when it comes to issues of race. Again, Biden is going to get savaged on all sides here, guys. His his association with President Obama will not save him and the chances that Obama endorses him in a primary are exceedingly low. Jamel Bowie says the possibility of defeating Trump without defeating Trumpism looms over Joe Biden's possible run for the 2020 Democratic nomination. The former VP's not yet candidacy centers on his appeal to the white blue collar workers who rejected Hillary Clinton in favor of Donald Trump. He believes he could have won them in 2016 and he thinks he can win them now. This isn't just about Biden's working class affect. As a senator from Delaware, Biden understood himself as a staunch defender of middle American interests. But those interests were racialized which is how a younger Biden could at once be a committed liberal and an ardent opponent of busing to desegregate his state's public schools. So now Jamel Bowie is making the case better to lose an election by ignoring those white blue collar folks than to pander to those white blue collar folks with anything approaching moderation. And he uses as his example of Joe Biden being a racist, Biden's opposition to forced busing. Now, forced busing is a battle we haven't had in the United States for 50 years. I mean, really, this goes back to the 1960s and 1970s. In the aftermath of Brown versus Board of Education and the aftermath of the Civil Rights Act, There were a series of pieces of legislation and court rulings that suggested that people would be bused from certain schools to other schools. So you wouldn't actually go to the school in your school district. If your school district was predominantly black, then maybe you would be bused out from that school district to a white school district. Or if there was a white school district that seemed to be better than a black school district in terms of population, uh, in in the in terms of of scores, for example, but I mean a black school district in terms of its population of of black students, then you would have white students bust in from the suburbs to black public schools. Now there's a strong case on libertarian grounds that forcing children to go to schools where they have no local connection is actually wrong. There's also a good case on practical grounds that this actually caused white flight. That what actually happened is that white folks didn't want their kids going to worse public schools because it turned out that a lot of these schools that were worse in terms of performance also happen to be heavily minority thanks to decades of underfunding and thanks to social problems and all the rest of this. And so a lot of white folks picked up and they moved out even further to the suburbs that it caused urban sprawl, that it caused people to leave, that it didn't actually make the education system any better. But Jamel Bowie says that if you opposed forced busing, then you're a racist and you were catering to white racists. So he specifically points out the fact that Joe Biden in 1975 said, I do not buy the concept popular in the 60s, which said we have suppressed the black man for 300 years and the white man is now far ahead in the race for everything our society offers. In order to even the score, we must now give the black man a head start or even hold the white man back to even the race. I don't buy that. And uh, and Jamel Bowie says Biden made his argument using language that is still common to opponents of efforts to rectify racial inequality. I don't feel responsible for the sins of my father and grandfather. I feel responsible for the situation today, for the sins of my own generation. And I'll be damned if I feel responsible to pay for what happened 300 years ago. Jamel Bowie says busing did its job integrating schools and improving outcomes for black students. But many whites viewed it as an encroachment on the privileges afforded them in a racially stratified society, what W.E.B. Dubois called a psychological wage given as compensation for racial solidarity. These Americans thought they could keep black children out of their schools and neighborhoods. Busing meant they couldn't, and they were angry. Well, no, sometimes busing actually happened in reverse. Sometimes it was white kids being bused into schools where they didn't have any friends, where they didn't have any community. the, The opposition to forced busing was, in part, opposition to force. Now, I'm all in favor of greater racial integration. I'm not in favor of forced integration. There is a difference between desegregation and forced integration. This was a legitimate argument. It was had in the 60s and the 1970s. There's a very good book on this by a legal scholar from the University of Texas named Lino Gralia. Came out maybe 15, 20 years ago. In, in essence, the notion that you oppose forced busing, therefore you are a racist, 
or therefore you are pandering to racial concerns per se. It doesn't necessarily follow. But the point, the broader point for Joe Biden is this. Dude's going to get savaged. Joe Biden has a problem. The base of the Democratic Party is more in line with the views of Jamal Bowie and Ilhan Omar and Rashida Tlaib and Ocasio-Cortez than they are with Joe Biden. In just a second, we're going to talk about how President Trump has some of these problems of his own. 